Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Today, let's look at the number one problem that I've seen in pretty much every student that I've ever had, and it's the one technical issue that I tend to jump on straight away. So, here's an example of the problem in the shape of a simple C major scale. So, did you notice the problem there? Here it is again. Now, here's how it should sound. So, the problem there is the gaps. You should be able to play each note for its full duration. So, each note should lead smoothly into the next. As opposed to... Now, obviously, that's not to say that every note that you ever play is going to be legato. Notes can be played in a whole manner of ways. You could be playing very short and staccato. Or a mixture. But you should be in control of that. The issue that we're talking about in this lesson is a result of bad technique or just plain lack of attention to that note duration. So one of the main common reasons for this can come from the incorrect assumption that you need to shift to a note before you play it. It's very much a case of play a note, release the finger, move to the next note, press it down and play. You know, a lot of people do that. So in the case of that C major scale, we get this effect. We have a C, so there's the C, play the C. Then stop, lift that finger off, move to the D, press it down and play. And then take the finger off, move to the E, and so on. In fact, what you should be doing is playing a note and holding it right up to the point that the next note should sound. You only move when that next note is required, so. There I am playing the C. I don't move anything until that D is required. Holding the C, move on the D. So I'll just work up through that C major scale again, working through the process as I go. Now, I'm assuming that pretty much all of you know a C major scale, but if you don't, it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? Third and fifth frets on the A string, second, third and fifth frets on the D string, and second, fourth and fifth frets on the G string. That's the notes. So for the first two notes, we have C and D, third and fifth frets of the A string, which we're gonna play with the second and fourth fingers. So to begin with, you just play that C. And what we're gonna do is play on beats one and three. So we're gonna have one, two, three. So we don't move the hand until that beat three. So one, two, see how I'm just holding it there. One, two, three. I move that fourth finger to that D on beat three, not before. There's no lifting the fingers off and then moving. There's no, you know, pre preparation at all. It's just a move as we need it, okay? One, two, three, four. Now, you might also be thinking, oh, I need to hold down the C while I play the D. Well, that would be nice technique, but you don't even need to do that. C and then D. You can take the finger off. I personally wouldn't. I'd like to keep it held there, but it doesn't matter. As you're going to see later on in this lesson, you can move around all over the fretboard. It doesn't matter. The actual movement comes on the beat required. So again, one, two, three, four. We keep it held. So three, four, one. We don't move that first finger to the E there, second fret of the D string, until one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the exercise. Now, this holding of notes is absolutely essential in walking bass lines. If we take a basic 2 5 1 pattern like this, Notice how each of those notes leads into the next one. If we have the gaps in there, it just doesn't sound right. It doesn't groove. It just, it just sounds wrong. It's not a walking bass line anymore. But... Okay. 
Now, sometimes the actual identification of this problem is enough to solve it. It's a little like avoiding ums and ahs when public speaking. Many times people don't even realise they have the issue. You highlight it and, you know, hey presto, it's solved. But sometimes there are more technical issues at play. One of these issues can be the other incorrect assumption that you need to stretch the hands when playing bass lines, just as I mentioned earlier. You know, you might think that you need big hands. Why would that be the case? Why would you need large hands? The only reason for stretching would be the thought that all fingers need to be held in a wide span while playing. But that's not true. As I've mentioned in many lessons on this channel, micro shifting, pivoting, you know, pivoting that thumb, and position shifting are the keys to moving between notes on the bass. The only time that you'll ever need to stretch is when playing hammer-ons and pull-offs like this. You know, but let's face it, how often are you gonna do that? For regular old bass lines, stretching is just unimportant. You don't need a short scale bass, you don't need huge hands, you should, well, you shouldn't be stretching, you should be moving the hands. Now, the problem that comes from attempting to alleviate this problem, or just from trying to shift in general, is the note duration. When moving the hand over any wider areas, the temptation is to move the hand between the notes. So if we take a move from F, first fret of the E string, to A at the fifth fret, as an example, you know, yes, you could use the open A string, but just for the sake of argument, let's just say that you're moving between those two notes. Played with the first and fourth fingers. The temptation would be to play lift the finger off and move. But we can still retain full note duration when playing the wide shift. You just have to follow the same rule of moving on the beat required. So let's try playing between F and A there. Again, on beats one and three. So we just play one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there might be the tiniest of gaps in between, but you know, it's, it's not the same as playing and then taking the finger off and moving. You move right there on the beat. So, one, two, three, four. The slower you try this, the slower the count, the more practice you, uh, you're gonna get at this. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So even though it's a very slow tempo, we're not moving you know, through a, a huge line playing, you know, like really fast notes. It's just a very, very simple line, but you still have to move the hand at speed. One, two, three, four, okay? So as an exercise, let's now try moving up through the notes. F, G, A, B flat, C, and D, okay? First, third, and fifth frets on the E and A strings. So we're gonna play with the first finger, second finger, and fourth fingers. So that's going to be F, G, A, B flat, C, and D. Now this is a fairly wide stretch. If I was to stretch it like this, I can do it. I've got fairly, fairly big hands and I've got a, a very good stretch, but you know, it's still a stretch and I wouldn't want to do that. If I was going to be playing a line like this, I would move the hand as I move, okay? So, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and then back down. Okay, so that's the exercise. And again, you want to try this just playing notes on beats one and three. So again, hold each note for the full duration and make the shift on the required beat. And it needs to be a fast shift. Don't be lazy with your technique. So, I've got that first finger there at the F. So we've got one, two, three. So when I hit the three, I hit the G. So, so one, two, three, four. And then up to the A there. So one, two, three, four. One, two, now, at that point, look where the hand is. My first finger is nowhere near that first fret. I'm actually up in this position. I've got the first finger pretty much over the um, over the third fret. So one, two, three, four. There, the first finger's moved up to the second fret, even though I'm playing this third fret. And then I move again. That's the micro shifting at play. One, two, three, four. One, two, and then down to the B flat. 
again and move the whole hand. Look, the fourth finger is now over the third fret. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's all about pivoting the thumb slightly, making those shifts, but most importantly, keeping those notes held and only shifting, I keep reiterating it, only shift when the note is required. Now, another tip for playing a line like this is to keep the hands as relaxed as possible. Don't tense up. So if you're all tense and you're, you know, trying to make that move, you know, quickly with the hands and it's, oh, I've got to move fast. Don't do that. <laughs> just keep the hand relaxed and just move it. Even though it's a fairly quick move, if the hand is relaxed, it will be a lot more fluid. So one, two, three, four. There shouldn't be any uh, uh, you know, tension in the hands or the arms or anything. It's just as effortless as you can possibly make it. So that's a good exercise for just working on that technique at a slow tempo. And once you feel comfortable playing through those notes, we can take things to a bit of an extreme by playing a line that looks more like this. So here we're really going to have to shift. You know, there's no way that you're gonna be able to play this without moving. So it's gonna be fifth fret to the 10th fret on the E string and then the same again on each string in turn. So E string, A string, D string, G string. So A up to the D and the D up to the G and the G up to the C and then the C up to the F, okay? So that's the exercise. So now, once again, let's try playing this on beats one and three slowly and making the shift on the required note. So we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So here I'm, I'm not really stretching the hand out as much as I can, but I have, you know, opened the hand up in a relaxed way, opened it up a little. And I've got the thumb somewhere around the sixth or seventh fret there. And as I do this, I'm shifting the thumb. The thumb is pivoting like, like this. <laughs> you can see the thumb there. So, so when I look behind the neck, I can see the thumb doing this each time as I play each note. So one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Now, obviously, for a lot of you that, you know, are not used to this <laughs> way of playing, it might be a little messy at first. You know, you're gonna be trying to move and like I scuffed a couple of notes there as I started off, you know, when I moved to that, that D there. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but if you can play this kind of line, keeping those held notes, playing is gonna be so, so much easier. It just gets you used to focusing on that held note. You might not be perfectly, you know, correct with playing it, you know, with a, a wider stretch like this. But if you strive to keep that note duration, like I say, when you're playing notes that are a lot closer together, or things that aren't even a stretch, you're going to be more in tune with that note duration, trying to keep things legato. Okay, so that's just a little technical tip that could totally change the way that you play or that might at least open your eyes to some deficiencies in your playing. Remember, if you can get through those more extreme exercises, playing simple bass lines with full note duration is gonna be easy. And also remember that slow practice like this is actually a lot more beneficial than fast practice. Don't even think about speeding up the lines. You don't need to. The speed of the line is totally irrelevant. It can actually be much harder to play cleanly at a slower tempo because the problems in there are more obvious. So give me a like, subscribe to the channel for weekly lessons every Friday and leave me a comment to let me know what other technical problems you might need help with addressing. There are over 750 lessons here on the channel, so there's a good chance that I've already covered many of the issues that you face, but I can always cover problems again if you need clarification. So remember the lesson material 
material is always there over at the Talking Base website. Just follow the link below and then sign up for the free membership to gain access to a ton of free resources and downloads, as well as the chat groups and forums. Okay, I'll see you next week.